Hey, this is Double Bar. I wanted to tell you that Anchor by Spotify is a great and easy way to make a podcast with everything you need in all in one place. Anchor has the tools to allow you to record, edit your podcast straight from your phone or your computer. When hosting with Anchor, you can distribute your podcast to all listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Best of all, it's totally free. So go down the Anchor app or go to Anchor dot fm to get started this is the let's roll podcast with your host double r hey everybody this is double r the host that rolls the most welcome back to the let's roll podcast today we're gonna talk about sex let's talk about sex what's not to like about sex let's do it let's discuss sex and disability right after this all right so let's talk about sex let's talk about sex and disability and how is it difficult to have sex when you have a disability <laughs> for some not all but for some uh sex is good i like sex not with everybody but i like sex um my um i'm gonna say my challenges when it comes to having sex is more physically being able to do different positions uh stuff like that i mean obviously being in a wheelchair and not being able-bodied it's gonna make it more difficult to have sex and the person that you're having sex with if it's an able-bodied or someone that's disabled, um, which, to be honest with you, I haven't had any uh, physically disabled person. I've never had sex with someone with a physical disability. So I don't know like, quite how good, bad, hard that is. I have had sex with an able-bodied person. So... Was it difficult? Mm, not really, because the partner, or the person that I had sex with, was, I'm going to say it like this, they were willing to do most of the work. So, I didn't physically have to do a lot of the actual sex. But down, down, downside to not being physically able to do a lot of, we'll say, sex positions, is you're limited to what you can and cannot do, obviously. And so you have to come up with creative ways to do it. I've had conversations with, you know, friends that are, have physical disabilities and they have, uh, you know, said how they were able to do it and how they had to adjust their body and put it their body in a certain position to be able to have sex. Like, when I say the ability to have sex, where they're doing the work and not the person they're having sex is doing the work. I had sex with a person that was doing the work. She did everything. Um, there was only maybe once or twice that I was physically able to get into a position to where I could be in more control or doing the work. Sex was hard in that way but i was still able to have sex i was still able, able to experience i didn't have sex until i was 30. um i had sexual experiences i guess you could say growing up made out with girls you know did the whole you know fondling and stuff like that but as far as having full-on intercourse that did not happen until i was 30. And I've only really technically, we'll say I've been with two women. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, but the first time I had sex and the first person I had sex with was an experience. One, I'm glad I had. It was scary. It was um, nerve wracking. I wasn't. I was ready, but I wasn't ready, if that makes sense. I mean, you would think I would be ready at 30. And, I mean, for the most part, I was ready. I was 
I wanted to experience it, but it's it's like with things in life that you your expectation supersedes the reality of it. And my expectation was it's still gonna be great. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be everything I thought it was gonna be. And it was none of those things at the same time. So when I first had sex, it was scary. It was like, wow, what am I doing right now? Um, I'm not going to talk about the circumstances of who I was having sex with and why I was having sex with, but I'm just going to talk about having sex with. <laughs> um, not going to name names, places, dates, all that good stuff. I'm just going to talk about the the act of having sex and what scared me about it, what freaked me out about it. And I'm going to do all that and more after this. So let's talk about my first time having sex. It was with a woman that I worked with. Uh, she f fell for me. Uh, and she pursued me. She wasn't somebody I was interested in. She wasn't somebody I was attracted to. Um, it, 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 she wasn't even a person I would even look at and think that way. But she pursued me, and she circumstances leading up to us getting together were that I was in a car accident, and it freaked her out. And she thought she just she told me, "I don't know what I would have done if if you if I lost you." So then we started back with A O L. That's how long ago it was. It's early 2000s. I'm going to say, well, it was the late 90s, or like real late 90s, early 2000s. And we had AOL. And so we were talking on Messenger, and I tend to flirt sometimes. Just just flirting in general doesn't necessarily I mean I like you. It's just I'm flirting, you know, I'm talking, talking shit, talking that smack. And anyway, we were having some kind of conversation. And she started telling me all the things that she wanted to do to me. And I had a friend at my house at the time, and I was like, look at what she's saying. She's saying all this stuff. She wants to... And it was freaking me out. And there were some circumstances of why it was freaking me out. But not to give into that, but she was telling me, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's do this. So I said, uh, I, I, I just, I, I didn't know what to do. So basically what ended up happening is, we, we initially worked together, and then when I had my car accident, they let me go. And then uh, and then she ended up leaving the company or the place that we worked. She ended up leaving there and going to another place. And then they were hiring, and they brought me on. So now we ended up at work together. And that's when the physical relationship started to happen. And started off slow with the BJs, and then it advanced. And one night at our apartment, we were sitting on the couch watching whatever. I don't know. I don't even remember exactly what we were doing, but I know what we were on the couch. And we ended up having sex. And we, we started, and I freaked out. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? And I got freaked out about it, and so we stopped. And then from that point on, it progressed and progressed and progressed and progressed. So she was my first. She was my first to have sex. She was, uh, there was a, a lot of firsts with her, not to go into deep into what, what our relationship was. But that was the first time I had sex, physically had sex. The next time I, I'm just going to say it like this, Next time I tried to have sex was when I was married. So my sexual experience was mainly with the first girl. It was scary just because I had never done it before. It was exciting because I was doing it. Um, and But it was also difficult. You know, difficult in some ways, not in others. I'm not going to say I didn't like it because I did. Um, but I haven't had that many experiences with sex, full-on sex, that is. Like I said before, I messed around with girls, you know, played, you know, played with each other, that kind of deal growing up. But even growing up, I didn't date. 
as I said in a previous episode, didn't really date that much, didn't have that many girlfriends, and definitely wasn't sexually active with the girlfriends growing up. That that really didn't happen as far as that goes. Um, I've always felt, felt like in my life, because of my disability, I've always been kind of behind the eight ball. I've experienced things later that most people would experience, like growing up, like, you know, I, like, for example, uh, the driving age in Texas, I don't believe it's changed, but that you, you can start driving when you're 16. Well, I didn't start driving until I was 19. You know, sex could happen anywhere, and this sounds disgusting, I know, but it could happen anywhere from 14 on. I didn't have sex until I was 30. I didn't go, I didn't go hang out with friends on my own until I was 18. Like, and what I mean by that is like, yeah, I hang out, I hang out with my friends alone in the neighborhood, but I didn't go like to parties or, you know, concerts or anything like that until I was like 18. I always had somebody that was a family member going out with me. So there's a lot of things I experienced late in life. Uh, I know this is supposed to be about sex, but I don't have that much to talk about sex. You know, um, I hope I find somebody, you know, that I can spend the rest of my life with and, you know, have sex. <laughs> Who doesn't? That's, it's kind of a joke. But, you know, even at my age now, as much as sex is important, if I don't have it ever again, so be it. Like, you just have to come to, to terms in life sometimes that things aren't going to happen anymore for you. You know, you, you, it's just, you know, it is what it is, and it's going to be what it's going to be. But, um, yeah, I I hope one day I can find somebody that's wanting to be with me the way I want to be with them and and have fun. I mean, at this age, I just want to have fun. I, I you know, I... I've said this to friends before that I'm not really looking to get married again. I just want to date. I want to have fun. I want to go out and enjoy life and enjoy that with somebody else. And that's all I really want right now in life. I don't, I'm not looking to, you know, fall in love and get married. And I, that's not necessarily the priority. Priority is just to find someone I can go and hang out with, have fun. If it gets physical, great. If it doesn't, okay. You know, but I just want the chance and uh, to experience life that way. There's so much that I didn't experience when I was younger that I want to experience now. And I guess I'm going to take a break and let's come back and talk about why there's a lack of sex in movies. <laughs> So not counting porn, because porn has sex. We all know that. Um, growing up in the 80s, man, um, there, there practically was never a movie that didn't have some kind of sex scene in it, some kind of nudity in it. And it seemed like as the year goes goes on, the, the, those scenes are less and less. And I noticed now, like today I started... Uh, what was that I started? Oh, I started to watch the new series on Hulu, uh, Pam and Tommy, about uh, Pamela Anderson and uh, Tommy Lee about their sex tape that got. And I just noticed that this particular series has nudity in it now. Like, like I would say a lot of streaming service streaming services have movies and series and shows, uh, newer stuff that have more sex in it. Uh, but, but let's look at the, going to the theater, like going out and seeing a movie. There is very little that has sex in it. It has nudity in it. It's like, it's like a big deal if there's an R-rated movie now. Most movies are not R anymore. And, I mean, I remember growing up having all kinds of stuff to watch, you know. 
One of my favorite all-time movies that I've discussed in its own episode is Last American Version. That whole movie was about having sex and trying to get laid and, you know, at a young age and coming in age movie. So it's weird how, like, it was so prominent in the past, you know, growing up, and it's not that prominent anymore. You know, speaking of porn, I remember going and finding my my dad's movies and sneaking off and watching them. You know, um, I think if more people had sex, there would be less stress in the world. But, but that's my take on it, you know. Everybody's all worked up about everything. And in our society, it's so sex is bad. Sex is bad, you know. Um, and yes, in some cases, it is bad. You know, uh, kids should not be exposed to sex at a young age at all. Now, does that stop them? Not necessarily. But if you're in control of the situation, yes, you should not be allowing your kids to see, play, watch, stuff like that. Um, and then there's sexual violence that, you know, is very bad and very uncalled for. And there's a lot of sick people out there that, you know, do things that are sexual abuse and stuff. And that I, I, I don't get it, don't understand it, never will, and will never accept it. And you're going to get what you get in the end. That's all I'm saying. I saw a, a story on on Facebook or whatever about a gentleman that was, I believe, in prison for sexual abuse of a child. And uh, he requested to be transferred because he knew his life was in danger in prison. And the request either went unanswered or denied and it was like two or three days after that he was found dead beaten to death from another inmate i'm not going to say that was right the act wasn't right but the karma was you know i i don't wish anything on anybody bad i i really don't and i'm not against um capital punishment or executing or you know but i look at it this way you put a child molester or a rapist especially a son to a child in prison that's going to get worked out naturally and i'm okay with that you know i'm okay that the fact that somebody took you know I mean, and I don't believe it's anybody that's going to get out in a couple of weeks or whatever decides, oh, I'm going to go beat this guy's ass. This is somebody that's going to be in there, probably has a life sentence. He got nothing better to do but to eliminate this person. And I'm again, it's kind of a gray area when you could say it's it's right or wrong. I mean, it's it, yes, it's wrong for that inmate to take that other inmate's life because of that action that other inmate took. It's natural. It's going to work itself out, and it's okay, you know? I don't necessarily condone it, but I'm not going to fight against it, if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm talking in circles right now because I'm trying to say something without saying something, if that makes sense. Be careful out there for falling for stuff on the Internet and social media. Uh, if you have children, make sure you're paying attention to what they're doing. Um there's a lot of sexual predators out there that, and there's just people in general, not necessarily sexual predators, but there's people out there that want to scam you, and take you for all you worth, or take you. Period. There's, um, we here's something I can tell you, uh, we I would not necessarily I was, but my friend was catfished one time. And not catfished in a in a way like it was a guy pretending to be a girl or a girl pretending to be a guy or whatever, but it was catfished in a way that the pictures that we got were definitely not the peop the person that we met. And it's kind of a for funny story. Again, this goes back when we had AOL Instant Messenger, and I was coaching 
basketball in a men's league. And not to go deep into this thing about basketball, but um, I was coaching this team only because the company I was working for didn't want, wouldn't let allow me to be the coach. So I went out and got my own players. Anyway, we were talking to this chick that we met in a in a chat party or whatever on AOL, and we were telling her, yeah, in my mainly my friend was talking to her, and my friend was like, yeah, I'm gonna be in a basketball game on such and such, you know, like Thursday or whatever it was. You ought to come out and check us, you know, check it out. And so we talked her into coming out. And so we go to the game, and the game's going on, and kept looking over at the bleachers to see if I could see this girl. Because we, she sent us pictures, and, man, the pictures she sent, she was hot. I'm like, good Lord, let's do this, you know. But uh, we kept looking over at the bleachers and couldn't find her. We didn't see her. No, and, and, and I think, no, I don't think we ever saw her. I, I think later on she told us that she came in, but but we kept waiting for somebody to come in and wave, like, hey, we're here, you know? Nobody, nobody, nobody. So at the end of the game, we're leaving the building, we're getting in my van, and as we're getting into my van, we hear this girl go, hey, we're over here. And we kind of looked over at them and said, hey, yeah, we'll be, we'll, we'll be right there. So we went ahead and got in the van and drove around and parked next to her. Now, I parked next to her on the passenger side, okay? So my friend is in my in the passenger seat of my car. So he can't see what I'm seeing. So I turn and I look and I was like, that's not the girl in the picture. Neither one of these girls are in the picture. And I turn back around, looked at my friend, he goes, What's up? I said, uh, we got a big problem. He said, What? I said, listen to what I'm saying. We have a big problem. And when I mean big, the pictures that we had that was supposedly her, she definitely wasn't big at all. But the girl driving the car, and no offense to anybody, this is just a story I'm telling. This girl was three plus. And then she had a friend with her that wasn't as big as her at all, but she definitely wasn't the girl in the picture either. And so... I just looked at my friend. I said, look, just be nice. Don't say anything. Just just be cordial. You know, just don't call her out on it. You know, we already knew it was like we just got catfished. So we just turned. We talked to him. We, we, we talked to him for a little bit. And then we went our separate ways and never talked to her after that. So that's why I said be careful who you're talking to online. Um, you know, be leery of stuff. Uh, this has nothing to do with sex, but this, um, you know, my mom keeps getting close to being tricked to doing, not doing, but to engaging in someone that's trying to take advantage of her, like money-wise. And just because my mom is a very open person, very friendly person, wants to talk and just, you know, just talk to people and, She's she's not, I'm going to say, savvy enough, if that's the word I want to use, to understand that who you're talking to is not the person you're talking to. You know, you, you, you just pick up on things. So just be careful out there. When it comes to people wanting to hook up with you, to people that want to take your money, just be careful. Um, I thought this would be a longer episode and I'd have more to talk about, but I really don't have that much to talk about sex, but I, I did want to talk about it a little bit, and which I did. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, reach out to me. Once again, reach out. Reach out to me on our website, www.thelessworldpodcast.com. Also consider to become a Patreon. We're eventually going to start recording the recording sessions uh, and post them on patreon way before the episodes come out so it's kind of like giving me episode in advance along with a video version where you can see all the hiccups and me just sitting here frozen because i don't know what to say that kind of stuff uh, so consider become a patreon you can find that information on the website um, make sure you share our podcast with 
everybody and anybody that you think would be interested. Make sure you give us a rating, write us a review, all that good stuff. With all that being said, always until next time, let's roll. Hey, this is Danny Heaney, and you're listening to the Let's Roll Podcast with host Double R. Make sure you're following us on all of social media. Find the links below in the description or at the Let's Roll Podcast.com.